We're ready to plug it in. And from here, our ballast has cord outlet. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about reflectors. In this case, we're looking at an inexpensive bat wing and there's a number of different models of the Batwing. It's basically a reflective piece of aluminum. You'll notice that they come with blue plastic. Be certain to take the blue plastic off, all right? From here, we're gonna plug our plug into our outlet ballast. So you never want to unplug this while the ballast is running because the light will arc and for the most part it will really scare you. So you want to always keep this connected, turn your light off using your timer or unplugging it from the wall. But never unplug it right here. Once we have our reflector cord plugged into our ballast, we're ready for our bulb to be screwed in. It's okay to touch the glass when you're screwing it in. After you're done screwing it in, we're going to want to take some Windex and a rag and clean this bulb off because you have oils on your hand. We do not want those oils on the bulb before we fire it up. We're going to test this particular light, plug it in, and turn the dial, make sure it works. And in this case, you can see it fires up right away and gets bright relatively fast because we're using an electronic ballast. If we're using a magnetic ballast, it's going to take a little longer for the light to get bright. Okay, we have different types of reflectors. This is the inexpensive bat wing. The nice thing about the bat wing is that it's inexpensive. The not so great thing about the bat wing is its reflective index is around 86%. When we're looking at having a grow light we're going to have for a long time, if you're using a bat wing, and that reflective index is 86%, that tells us that you're losing 14% of your light before the light even comes out of the reflector. The reflectors I like have the German polished aluminum in the back. You can tell it's pebbled. It does three things. One, it disperses the light evenly. So we don't have 80,000 lumens here and 180,000 here. The light is relatively even throughout the canopy. The second thing I like is the reflective index. It's very efficient. This reflective index is 96%. We only lose 4% of our light. Has a six inch flange to help cool the light. Remember, light is our friend, but heat is our enemy. If it's too hot in your growing environment, you're not gonna grow anything. So we wanna be able to cool that light, and the closer we keep the light to the plants, the better the plants can facilitate the light to create photosynthesis and create a bigger yield. So whenever we're selecting a reflector, let's keep in mind the more efficient the reflector, the better our yield, the better or more possible it will be to keep that environment cool. Once again, we have glass. It's gonna contain the heat inside. We're gonna pull the heat out from the side vents. The second thing, we have the German polished pebbled aluminum. It creates a 96% reflective index. It creates an even dispersion and a very good coverage as the light comes out. So when you're selecting your reflector, remember the reflective surface does matter. Okay, when we set our lighting system up, it's best to set it up with a timer. Like I said, if you have only one light, the timer I like to use is the dual outlet. It's going to control both of these outlets on the same time schedule. So you can plug your ballast in on one side and your fan, which should be cooling the light on in the other side. Now if you're running more than one light, I would recommend going with a four outlet timer, an eight outlet timer, I believe they come in 16 and 24, uh, depending on how many lights you're running. The advantage to this is it's going to synchronize all your lights in one timer box. This particular timer is made by Sentinel, it runs at 240, I believe they also make them at 120, and what we're going to do, this right here is going to be wired into your electrical box. And this is a trigger back timer, so we're going to plug it into really any timer. You can plug it in and set the time schedule here, plug it into the wall, and now all four of your lights are going to be operating 
on the same time schedule and all four plugs will go directly into the timer. So this is going to make life a lot easier rather than trying to synchronize two or four or five of these timers. One of the last things you'll need is something to hang your light. A lot of people use chains, some people use yo-yos. I like the light hanger. I think this is the way to go. Instead of spending money on chain or yo-yos, get the light hanger. It makes it a lot easier to move the light up and down, just like a mini blind, and uh, it allows you to move the light not only up and down, but also position the light evenly towards the canopy.